All right, thank you. Uh, we are now recording. Audio is on. So this, uh, the white, you should be seeing the whiteboard. So as I said, this is probably, you know, I would say the last topic um, of the main topics. I still want to do something else, something a little bit different next, next week if we have time, but I need to finish this first. Right, and so this is the last main topic, which is sessions and you know PHP, um, and this will be also as needed for the use, you know, to keep track of things for user account management. So I'll provide some of the code, and I'll let you guys just finish it up basically uh, for your term project. So, what is this idea? Sessions. We can also call this session tracking. Session tracking. Okay, so uh, basically the reason why we need this is we want to keep track of state, right? So the, the problem is websites are stateless, right? So websites are stateless. So what that means is you don't keep track of things, right? So so then uh, state is important to keep track of a sequence of requests from a single user. Okay, so if we have a single user, uh, so state is important uh, to keep track of a sequence of requests from a single user. So the classic example of this is what we are doing right, you know, what we want to do right now, you know, with user account management. So the idea is that you're going to have a, um, you're going to have a user. Basically, you're going to have a user. They log in, right? They sign in. They they're uh, validated in the database and then a session is started for that user that that creates the idea of a variable a state array or a session array in the PHP server and then you can use that uh, that very conveniently to store information that's you know the beauty of it is that you will be using that to keep track of the user and keep track of their information right now the other element that comes in here is the idea of Okay, so we have this idea of cookies. Uh, we've talked about it already. You guys have played with cookies in the, and you don't really have to do anything with cookies, honestly, because everything is handled behind the scenes by the session. But cookies are one way to keep state, right? So that, that's basically the idea. They are one way uh, to keep state. Um, as you know, a, a cookie is a bit of information, like a little file. Uh, and, you know, so it's a little file file on the uh, client, right, on the client side, right? And it stores some information. So now the server, so the idea is that the server, you know, when a session, when a session is started, you know, the PHP server, you know, stores uh, session information, information, and provides a unique ID to the client. Right to the client, and that can be stored in the cookie in the in the client. So whenever the browser now wants to communicate, it grabs that cookie, it grabs that ID, it sends it to the server, and the server can just easily look up the session array. Okay, so on every subsequent request, <clears throat> the client will give the information back to the server, therefore identifying itself, and that's really the whole idea of it. So that's one thing 
that we are now going to start, we're going to start using, right? We're going to start using this idea of the session. And it's actually a, a quite convenient object in PHP that we could use uh, again. So sessions are, you know, basically they're data stores, they're like files, they're saved on the server. So sessions on the server have a session ID, which is sent to the client to be stored, as I said, on the client's cookie. Uh, now sessions, so the, the important thing is in PHP, we're going to use the idea of a session array, okay? We're going to have a session array, uh, and now this is where we can store our, our data, right? So, we, you know, before we've been using things like get and post, and those are necessary uh, to view our data, or, yeah, to view our data as we receive it, but they were not exactly a place to store the data that we need. Now we have this very convenient uh, tool, all right? Um, and so therefore we can, we can take any variable that we want and we can assign it to this session array going forward. For example, you know, example, you know, you can do something like whenever you want to initial, initialize um, a session, right? What do you need to do? You, you probably just need to grab, uh, you just need to grab, um, you log in, right? And the second you log in and you get authenticated, you would then in the process do session start in the PHP code, right? Session start. And then once that's done, the server now has a session associated. That's really all you have to do. And then you can proceed and write something in there. So usually what you write in here is things like, you know, uh, the user has authenticated, uh, the user is an administrator or the user is just a regular user. Uh, the user is a paid customer versus, you know, you know, for instance, in YouTube, right? You guys sign up for it and that means you're signed in, but do you have a uh, subscription? Well, if you have a subscription, the session would say, oh, this is a subscriber. So no ads versus no, 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 this is not a subscribe. This is not a paid subscriber, therefore ads. And so whenever they want to decide whether they show ads to you or not, they can just look up the session and, and see if session uh, paid subscriber equals zero, okay, then show ads. If session paid subscriber equal one, that's true. So they, they, they are paid, so then don't show ads. And that's how that works. So let's just say here, you could also just store the email. You know how in some uh, websites it shows your email. So then you just, when you do the query, right? When you do the query and you, and you authenticate, uh, you probably got the email as we did in the last example. So you just store it there. Does this make sense, guys? Does this idea make sense? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yes. and that's a critical, critical thing. If you understand this, then everything else uh, should be pretty straightforward. There's really no, um, no, you know, magic or anything like that beyond this. So, you know, when you do the session start, right? So when you do uh, the session start, this just loads data to the session, okay? To this or the session data start, which is accessed through this array over here. Okay, so this is PHP code, as you probably know. Okay. Um, now, by default, PHP session ID cookies um, expire when the browser is closed, right? So you probably know that just from experience, or some people uh, can set it differently. So that just depends on your configuration parameters. Um, so that is to say, sessions do not persist after the browser uh, ceases to exist. So the, a, a good example of this is like banks, right? So banks that have a high security uh, one, you know, they log you out, but other things like, you know, Gmail, uh, Netflix, probably, uh, YouTube, they want you to stay signed in. Why? Because obviously they, you know, they make more money when you're interacting with, but so that's something that you can work on. It just has to do with the expiration. If you, if you delete the cookie, right, there's no, no way to keep track of it. All right, 
<clears throat> okay. So that's, I think that should be enough clarification of what this is because we're going to start using it. All right. <clears throat> so that, given that we're finished with that, so now I think that that's all that we need in terms of theory to get back into the code. So, so my goal now today is to try to wrap up a lot of what I started. So I believe uh, we were working on the registration page uh, last, uh, last time we met. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing this. And now we're just going to start the virtual machine and go ahead and try to implement some of these aspects. Okay, so let me start the VM and then I'll start sharing the screen. And I'm going to start the VM now. So you should be seeing the VM. It is currently loading there. All right, so now the only table that I'm going to create or that I've created is the users table. So I have no other tables to create, but you guys, as you start developing your own website, obviously you will be creating your own tables, okay? So I leave that to you. Also, I leave to you, you know, fixing the CSS, making that a little bit more presentable, um, as I only really want to make sure that this is clear, all right? So, so what are some of the things that we need? Now? All right, so let's take a look. I believe the last thing we worked on was the registration page. So let's go there. So now I'm in the terminal and I'm gonna navigate. Course website. All right, um, so now we are in MVC example. All right, so this is where you were and that's our register page. So we can go ahead and take a look at it. Could have called it registration page. All right, here we are. So last time we met, we uh, brought in the configuration file, we brought in the MySQL connection, brought in the header, and then we did uh, if request method is a post, right? So somebody has sent something to this page, we grab the parameters and um, we use prepared statements, right? So we went over this on Tuesday, so you guys saw that we did a select statement where email or username are there, right? And then we just bind the parameters. Remember that this is to avoid SQL injections. We execute the command, right? And then we need to have some logic in here, right? So you guys need to have some logic in here. Um, so let's say, So we did um, so when we do the statement execute, right? We can check. So now you need to check in here. So I'll let you guys do this part, right? But check for. Um, Let's see, so the logic is check that does not exist, right? You guys see that? That's the first thing. So how do you do that? You, you run this on the database, 
and then this gives you a result, right? So you need to grab the result. Oops, not there, sorry. So you need to now grab the result, right? Something like that, right? And then you need to assess, okay, check that the user does not exist. So I'll, I leave that to you guys. Uh, once you have checked that the user does not exist, what do you do? If the user does not exist, you continue down here and now you insert them into the database. So again, you do a prepared statement here and you say insert into users, first name, last name, email, uh, password, username, values, first name, last name, email, password, uh, username. Okay. And that's basically the the command, as you know, and you, you bind the parameters. So first name, last name, email, you know, and we did this, I believe we did this uh, on uh, Tuesday and we saw that actually we could write to the database. So there were no issues. Remember also that even though you are binding the parameters so you do have a prepared statement that protects from SQL injection, you should still validate your inputs and the valid, the inputs can be validated on the, uh, they can be validated on the, on, the, on the client side with JavaScript, okay? All right, so how do you do this part? So once you insert, what else do you need to do? Um, so, so of course, this would have to be within some kind of an if statement, right? So I just wanna write in here, again, I don't wanna solve all of this for you, but you know, something like if, you know, rows, zero, right? So rows zero. So what does that mean? It means that when you did this query, it returned zero because the, the, the email or the password did not, ex or the user did not exist. And therefore, if rows equals zero, you continue, then continue to insert, okay? Otherwise, insert else, a display message. You know, saying something like, hey, you know, this user already exists. Okay. And then once you've done that, once you've inserted, so let's say that you've inserted, uh, then what do you do? Uh, you know, just display maybe a message, you know, like, like we did here, uh, insert it, thank you. And that's it, right? So that's it as far as the register form. Does this make sense, guys? Yeah. Yeah, all right. So let's just actually, let, let's make sure everything is running. So I wanna go back here. Virtual host. Yeah, there we go. So we have a register, register page, right? So we got, and also please, you know, work on the presentation. It should look a little bit prettier than that. All right. Um, if I let, let me just double check the registration page. So I believe that one is complete. So we've got the database. We know it works. If post, insert, handle the insert, but first check this, you know, check that the user does not exist. If user, if row zero, then continue to insert else display message. Then we do the insert and then just display some kind of a message. You know, I leave that to you guys. All right, and then the form was fine as well. And you just need to work on the presentation. All right, so that's the registration page. So I believe we are done with that. So now the next thing we need to worry about is the, the login page. So we need to, and the login now is the other side of this. 
that it will be a little bit uh, complex as well. Okay, so the login starts in the footer, right? So the login starts in the footer actually. So let's go there then. Um, the login involves login and log out, but it's actually in the footer. So let's save this one All right and now. Let's take a look here. Um, HTML. These are the M the model view control. This is the view part. So we are here and I can do ls dash L. There we are. So if you remember the footer is the one that contains uh, what we need. Okay, so we go to footer. All right, and now we have to think about footer. Remember, it's um, it concludes whatever we started in the body in the index. But this is where this div called sidebar is the one that can contains all the inf relevant information that we need. And then uh, after that, we have the footer section over here, which is just, you know, this is pretty straightforward. Um, okay, so really our focus needs to be here, from here to here in the sidebar. Initially, what we did with this is uh, we have a PHP script and we set if is set session, remember, now here's the, what, what I just talked about, right? I just talked about this. So this assumes that the session already exists, right? So if you're, if, if, if that happens, right? If session user ID is set, what does that mean? It means you are logged in, okay? You are logged in. Therefore, it should show the logout, okay? It should show, show the log, logout. And we're going to need to have this file defined for our purposes. I can also see here there's an error. You guys see that? There's a little error right there. We'll fix that if you haven't done so already. All right. So the logout page is if we are logged in. However, else, if we are not logged in, then show here, show the login form, okay? So that's what we're gonna do now. So let's say else, oops. Oh. Let's just say a little comment and I'm gonna say here, um, if not logged in, show log in form, All right? Obviously we need to get rid of this because now we are going to add the, the pertinent information that we need. And in this case, what we're gonna do is we are going to, uh, what do we need here? We need the login form. So we are actually, to make this better, easier, we are going to create a separate file, a separate script just for that. So in that case, we just require here a PHP script. So we're gonna say require, and then we're gonna say, um, can you guys hear me well, or is, it, is the audio breaking up? I can hear you just fine. Sound fine. All right, so require, um, a file, right? And did we have an includes folder? I think we did. So let's, let's put it in the includes folder, okay? Now, I made a mistake here. Make sure you don't do this, right? Get rid of that root because that'll take you to the root folder. Instead, just do this, includes. And then let's call the file login login form dot include dot php doing this we now can reference 
a login form .php where we're going to have the actual code that we need need. Does this make sense guys what we're doing here? Yeah. Yes. yes. All right, so I'm going to save it. And now uh, we can get out of here and we can go into the includes. All right, and now in the includes, we need to create this new file, right? We need to create this new file. Do that, and now I'm gonna do sudo nano login, login form, was it? Login form.inc dot php okay so now this is what's going to contain our form all right and we just add our php tags PHP. let me let me do something guys i don't know this computer of mine is having problems me a sec. All right. Um, okay, let's go back. Okay, so this form, we can open it again. And we can see here PHP. Um, And now, so this script will be display will display the login form. Uh, it's as, as we saw it, it'll be included in the foot by the footer. Only if the user isn't log logged in. So then, um, basically, we are going to create a. Um, the f a form basically. So let's let's go ahead and um, let's see. Actually, this can just be HTML. Now that I think about it, there's nothing. Don't think there's any need for PHP. All right, so let's let's just go with that actually. So there's no need for PHP, but let's let's keep it like this. Um, well, actually, let's let's just leave it there just in case we might come back to it. Okay, so. What we what we definitely need here is a Oh, maybe let's just add a comment, I guess. Just say, uh, contains the login. All right. And then here we just need to create the HTML tags for a form, right? The action is going to be, we have to think about that, but whenever you log in, what should it do? Probably go to the index page, right? That's the central one index.php the method needs to be post so method is going to be post okay so form action uh, and that should be enough close the form over here right and when you log in you really only need uh two text boxes right you need the 
user, you know, the email, and then the password, and then a submit button, really. So we can do, um, can do label. And again, you guys should make this a little bit better looking. Label, say email, and then um, we're going to add, you know, you can do like uh, an input here. Uh, so we're going to say, yeah, so a text box type text. Okay, and of course the name is going to be email, so we can get it in the post. So this uh, email, like that. All right, and then a break line. Okay, we're going to do the same for. Okay, this is going to be the password. Password. Um, label, and then the text box here can be input password. Or just pass. Just remember whatever name you used. And then finally, a button down here. Uh, input type submit. Something along those lines. And the value, let's say value log in log in and that should be it correct all right so i think with just this we should now have um you know we should have we should now have what we need so let, let's try it i guess let's go ahead and try it so I'm going to do control X, Y, quote, and then now let's go to the browser. Okay. Moment of truth here, refresh. Ah, there it is. You see that? Very good. So now we have our form. Uh, if we go to the home page, uh, you can see that we have our login. Obviously, you need to work on the presentation of it, but your content would go here, and then now you need to log in. So you would put in, you know, uh, J Smith, there we go, at PNW, and then, you know, type in the password. And then when you hit login, right, we sent the information to the index.php. Remember that. Any questions about this part so far? I don't think so. I don't think so. Nope. All right. Good. 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 Okay. Give me a sec. I'm trying to figure out why my fan is running so much. All right. Um, let's go back. So what else do we need? Well, now we are at this form. Let's say we are at this login. And whenever we hit the login, we actually went to the index page, right? That, that was the first thing we did. So let's let's then, because that's what we 
looked at, right? We looked at the, you know, we say when, when you log in here and you log in there and you press login, it, uh, so now I'm gonna go um, to back to the terminal here. Okay, we take a look at this file. We know that we go to index.php. Okay, so then let's, it makes sense to go to index.php. Let's see. All right. Clear ls. All right, so there's index. So sudo nano index. <laughs> Okay, and what do we have in index so far? In index, we have the includes config inc. So config inc had, ah, so, so we're gonna have to make now some modifications to config inc. Okay, that's the first thing. Um, okay. Then my SQL, that one we shouldn't need to uh, modify because that was just related to the database. So let's think about that one. All right. Um, yeah, so that one should not be an issue. Then we have the header. The header, I don't think there's anything to change there. Then your logic, whatever it is, and the footer over here. So we need Somewhere in here, Let's see. Okay, so now in index, we need to add a little bit of logic. This is actually where we're going to do the authentication. So we just, sub we just submitted some information, right? Let's think about this. Somebody is attempting to log in. They came in here to the index page. You require config inc PHP. And I believe here, let's just, let's just go with it. So here, so we need to authenticate them, right? So let's say if post request, post request, then handle login attempt, right? So somebody is attempting to log in. We need to handle that somehow. So how do we do that? We need to check in a database. Okay, so what we're gonna do here then is add an if statement, if dollar sign, remember the login just called this page. So we need to say something like if server um, if server request method request method, right? Equal post. That means that somebody just came here, let's say from that login, they posted the method method, which is true. So now what do you do? you need to handle those credentials in here. So one way of simplifying so that the code seems is a little bit easier is once again to do an include. So I'm gonna do include, and now I'm going to have in here, in the includes folder, another file called login.inc.php. Okay, so we're gonna bring in that code in here. Make sense? Yeah. 
Yeah. And, and that's it, right? So that's what we're going to do. So we are going to, if it's a post, they come here. And now we're going to try to handle the login attempt. So include, includes login, dot ink, PHP. All right. So that should be it. Yeah, page's yeah. name is login underscore form. Say it again, sorry. The page is called login underscore form. I believe. Oh, that was another one actually. So oh. the login underscore form just shows the form that appears in the footer. Ah, this okay, my bad. This is just a little bit of code that will handle now the login attempt. Remember that here somebody types some information, right? So somebody typed information here, they hit login. What happens is they come to index PHP and this piece of code here, this code segment, is gonna check that somebody posted and if they did, now they're going to take those parameters and authenticate them. Do you see that? Yeah, that makes sense now. All right, great. So now then, I believe this should be enough Right, so includes login in PHP. All right, so then let's go ahead and save this file. All right, and now we go back to includes. We go back to includes. And now we need yet another one, right? So we have config ink, we have login form. Now we need login ink. So I'm going to create that one. Login dot ink dot PHP. All right. And now this one should be a pure PHP page. And so PHP. And then in here now, let's think about it. What do we need to do here? We need to grab. So the, remember, this code is added to the other one, right? So basically the post array would come here, right? The post array comes here and we just want to assign it uh, to a couple of variables. So we know we're sending the email and we know we're sending the password, right? And so the first thing is we're gonna grab these we're gonna grab these, okay? And then now, um, we need our email. So that, I think the name was email, and then I think the, e the name here was pass. So we grab these two elements, okay? Let me save this. All right, now the next step is what? We need to perform the query, right? We need to do our SQL query. Um, so here, we would do, and again, you need to do this with a prepared statement, okay? So I'll let you guys do this part. Uh, so I'm going to say, you know, do with prepared statement, but I'm just going to give you the logic here. So I'll let you guys solve it. So do with prepared statement. I'll do it the other way. So, but the gist of it is you create a query. Uh, let's say select all or, or some parameters. It, it's up to you. Uh, from users correct so you're going to say this from users where and now you have to meet a condition okay so we're going to say from users where email now keep in mind this is insecure so you should as i said use a prepared statement please but just for the sake of simplicity so i'm i'm plugging in the email and also the password. So I don't remember what this was called in the database, but let's say it was pass, I, I think it was pass one actually, or no. Let's just say password, I don't remember. 
All right, and then this one would be dollar sign P. Now keep in mind, also there's one more step. Um, so, let's see, yeah. So there's one more step that we need to address and that is the fact that the password, I'm just gonna do this as a comment, but the password needs to be hashed, right? So you guys type probably the clear text, you have to decide at some point where you hash the password, okay? We need to define this function. So I'm just leaving it as a comment for you right now. Once you have the query, right? Once you have the query, then you need to run it. So you're gonna do your uh, query run, right? So something like, Dollars, oops, dollar sign, you know, something like that. And then you can say, remember what was, now the MySQL should be there, correct? Because we brought it in in index.php. So if you remember index.php had it, therefore we have that MySQL element available. And so we can just make a reference to, I think it was called DBH. EDH, and we do our query. Oh, by the way, um, maybe let's just call this SQL. And then here, let's do the query. Okay, guys? Like that. All right, so we make the query to authenticate. Keep in mind, if, if the email and that password exist in the database, this will return a record, right? If they don't exist in the database, it'll return a zero. So it's either gonna return one record because we only allow unique emails, right? So it's either gonna return one record or no records. And that's how you tell if something, oops, sorry. That's how you tell if a user is in the database or not. Any questions about that? No? All right, so, nope, nope, all right. So then what you need to do here, I'll let you guys solve this part, but we can say something along the lines of if a PDO number of rows, right? So a type of a function like this, so you'll need to write this function. If PDO number of rows uh, in uh, dollar sign STH um, equal to one and only one, then you authenticate it. Else you didn't authenticate. Okay, so that's what's important there. So let me put here maybe uh, a match. Okay. Else, else, um, you can say something like no match was made. All right, so that's basic. So now the question is what happens here? What do you guys think should happen there? What do you guys think? You need to do something with ses the session array. The session, right? Very good, very good, uh, very good answer. Exactly, so now you need to figure out what goes in the session. This is where you actually set up values in the session related to what you wanna do, exactly. And, you know, so what is that? Um, you know, if you have now currently in our in our database, we don't have this idea of administrator or regular user. But if you did, if you did, 
you would say here, is this an administrator? Is this a, a regular user, for instance, right? So that's one thing you can do. Um, so obviously all of that would be here, right? So all of that would be in this one. You can also call this row if you prefer. So it might be a little bit more intuitive. And then let's make row because it's just one row really, right? So let's say here then you would take, you know, row square bracket um, admin, for instance, and you set this then to admin in the session itself. Oops, sorry. You set this to admin in the session itself. Do you see that? So that obviously that logic, it's gonna depend on what you're doing. Uh, now, two things that will be very important though that you should do definitely are uh, the user ID, right? So let's say dollar sign session, oops, session. And here you can say user, oops, user. And so this would come from row. Again, the, just depending on what kind of information you're getting. So user, so that, you know, J Smith, or it could be the email if that's what you prefer. So username, uh, you could have a user ID, the, the unique ID, right? That's actually there in the database. So if that's what you want, you can do, user ID. All this information is very important because later on, every time you visit a page, you have to check and say, is user ID set? If so, logged in, otherwise not logged in. And then that's how you control whether, well, I think it was just that. That's how you control whether somebody has authenticated or not. Any questions? I don't think so. All right, great. Uh, and that's it. That's basically, at this point, the user is uh, authenticated. Okay. So that's why this form just handle, if you notice, this just handles this little bit, right? It, it, if you think about it, all this does is it checks the post array, it queries it, Right, it is going to query it in the database. If the user exists, great, then it's going to be one. And so, what happens? You set the session. Now the session is created, and the se the se the session takes care of state because now you can go to any page in your website, and you're going to know. Okay, that user. The first thing you can always do is check: is user ID set? If it's set. This user is logged in, so now I can just use the session for whatever I want to use it. If they're not, now if they're not logged in every page, including this one, what do you think it should do? Like if uh, that was equal to zero, right? When they logged in, you know, you can either display a message that says not logged in, or you could redirect them somewhere, redirect somewhere. That's a common thing. And in particular, in other pages, you also use that redirect somewhere else. Okay. Okay, so we are now all right, and that's it. That should be all that we need there. Oh, and remember, you just have to, you know, finish this part. I'll leave that to you. So let me go control X, Y, enter. Okay, so now let's go back to index, actually. No, no, no. Index. Okay, so, we've, so we have the config in here. We have the require, and now we've done this part. So let's assume... A user went through this 
successfully. They are logged in now. So the session has values. And now the next thing that gets displayed is the header, whatever logic goes in. Okay. So for this page, I believe uh, there's nothing else that we need to do. Okay. So we're making good progress. I'm not hearing any questions, so please feel free to stop me at any time if there's something that's not clear. Okay, so I, I think right now all we have left is um, we need a function for hashing, right? So we need a function for hashing the functions, or sorry, the password. And that, you know, I could really just leave that to you guys, but um, you know, there's a function called hashmac. You can just use that. We do need a function for redirection. Remember what I said, right? So whenever you know, a user does not authenticate correctly. So, so let's take this example, for instance. Right? So let's take this example. Um, here, you could, somewhere in here, Somewhere in the header, or this sorry, this is the what is this? The index page. I'm trying to think if it makes sense to do that here. No, maybe not. So I know we need to do a couple more things. One of them is the redirect page, but I'm trying to think where to put that. Let's, let's actually go to config ink. So we know config ink is actually the very first page we read in into every page, right? Pretty much when, you know, like you do index. I'm pretty sure when you guys create all your other files, you will use this one kind of as a template. So if you think about it, Includes is the very first place where you have that you have access to. So maybe let's put the function there. So I'm going to save this. And now I'm going to go to the includes folder. All right. And in includes, uh, let's go to config ink. Config ink. Yeah. And if you remember, all we had done initially is to create the MySQL variable that ties to the, uh, that has all the database information, the local host and everything. So in here now, we can do a couple of things. And we had actually left room for that. Now, one thing that you saw me in the slides is that we had to have a command called session start. That just means that whenever we first load a page, we want to start the session. So really, it makes sense to put that here. So I'm going to do session start. And that just initializes that whole mechanism in the server of sessions. That's it. You just have to do that. And then here, let's just put the redirect function. So I'm going to do function. And that way, you can invoke this function from every page. So I'm going to say function redirect invalid user. You see that? And so the goal of this, uh, of this function basically is to have it at the top of every page to check the session. If the session is not initialized, redirect the user somewhere. So, you know, probably the index page. So then we can say uh, if not 
is set, right? So if not is set something, oops, then redirect. So, oops, sorry. Now the question is, what do we check? What do you guys think? What should we check? <laughs> what do we check? I want to check for the uh, password. Not the password. The password is the one thing you're not going to store in the session because that should only be in the, in the database. Uh, the, uh, uh, the username user then. The username, right? Something that you've recorded. That, Again, this is up to you. It's your choice. Uh, but yeah, you're going to check the session. So remember, you've logged in already. Therefore, the session has values in it. And so then you can just check, uh, let's say, and this is, you know, whatever you want it to be. Let's say email, for instance, you know, is set or, or something along those lines. So the, if this is true, then the user is authenticated. Everything is great. However, if they're not, so if not, that's why this is, if not is set, then you need to redirect them. And usually to do that, you do something called header, the function built in, and you just say uh, location, location, location and then here uh, you could define it as a variable a URL and then just define you know so it's more flexibility then define your variable URL here URL and then define where you want to send them right so I, I would think probably index PHP but that's also up to you all right, and then usually when you do this, you want to kill the rest of the script uh, because you're going to send them directly to another place so you can just easily do exit. And that just uh, quits <clears throat> the script basically. That's it. So if you think about it, the function redirect just does, if not is set, redirect somebody somewhere. Else do nothing. Right, literally do nothing. And that actually works out really well for us. Is this clear, guys? Now, one thing that's probably recommended is that this should be the full path. Okay, the full path like HTTP, HTTPS. So in this case, local host, you know. Uh, your path index PHP. Because remember that uh, redirection and things like that work on HTTP URLs and not on file system structure. Basically. But you can play with that and figure it out. So if you notice in summary, this uh, config in ink PHP does, we do two, several things, right? We initialize the variable name. Remember, this is pretty much the first file that gets processed every time. We process the local host URL. We start the session, very important. We only start it once, right? So we only start it once uh, here when we do this config inc. Then we uh, do the function redirect here. And uh, we just check that they're logged in. If they're not logged in, we redirect them somewhere. And that's it as far as config ink PHP. Any questions on this file? I don't think so. Pretty clear? All right, good, good. So what else do you guys think we still have um, left?
I think we had the logout, right? You guys remember, we still need to define the logout page. Yeah. Yeah, so, so let's, and, and believe it or not, we are almost done. So with this, you should have a fully working um, user account management. So and we're doing good on time. So let's take a look at, get out of this one. And I think we can probably just put it here. So let's do logout. Pseudo nano logout. Logout.php. All right. So again, this will be a PHP page. PHP. Like that, right? Pretty straightforward. Now, what do we need in logout? Um, What do we need in logout? Um, let's load at this point. We load configing. So let's let's load acquire includes includes config dot ink dot php and then now we are because this is the logout whenever we hit remember so if we are in we've logged in where the form used to appear now there's a little button a link that says logout so when we click on that link it brings us here right so we load the config ink. We really don't have to do much except destroy the session. So then to do that, we can do something like dollar sign session. And we can just uh, empty it first. So we can do just array. This should empty it. Okay, then we can do destroy. So we can do session destroy. Okay, or something along those lines. And that basically gets rid of the session. So now it is gone. You could also get rid of the cookie if that's what you want to do. Um, I'll leave that to you guys. You know, also delete the cookie. be thorough okay and then what else and then after that um, probably redirect right so this is a good opportunity to just redirect well but that would yeah we're, once you destroy the session you're not logged in anymore so therefore we can just call uh, redirect invalid user and that will just take you to the index page. So we don't really have to do anything else on here. And that function is defined in config ink, so we have it available. Does this make sense, guys? Yeah. Perfect. Yep. All right, so that, that is it. Um, I'll give this one final look, but I think this should be everything that you need to configure uh, user accounts with PHP. I mean, you can add more things, right? You can add like a, a message, thank you, and, and all that. But really, honestly, if, if you just do this, I think that it's enough because if you think about the logic, Config Inc. just bring, brings in this, right? You know, the session information. Then you do these, you take these actual steps to destroy the session, the cookie. And then once you're done with that, you basically redirect to the index page again. It'll just say log in again. And so, and that's it. I'm gonna save this one. All right. Okay, so really the only thing that we should have left to define 
Should be. I think the only thing that we have left is hashing the, the password. And I'm trying to think where we can put that. Hmm. Where do you guys think we should put the, uh, the hashing function? You know what that means, right? It means that we take the password, which is in clear text, we need to hash it because we want to store the hash version of it on the database. So what would be a good place to put that? Shouldn't, uh, shouldn't that be ideally in the JavaScript? That way you don't send plain text password over the web? So that's a very good question. I like that question. Um, however, remember that a couple of things. If you put it in the JavaScript, you have to put in a lot of elements that would be available to people, right? Because remember that people can see your JavaScript. Do you remember that? Yeah, so then they would be able to see the hash function. Exactly. So they would be able to infer how you did it. You see that? So I'm. Um, 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 a probably a better thing would be that the security of the password is achieved through uh, using HTTPS, not HTTP. You know what I mean by that? Yeah, so then it would be a secure tunnel yes. in uh, HTTPS, so they wouldn't be able to see it regardless. Regardless, exactly. Very good cache, exactly. So. You're in the, so think about it, right? So you're in your browser on your computer and you open this, oh, well, actually, let's do this. Uh, so I'm here, right? You're here. And, you know, you're in your computer at home, whatever. And then you type, you know, your, you know, John Smith, and then you type your password here, right? Type it. When you hit this login, remember that your browser should go to the server, but using HTTPS that the connection from your browser, which is secure, right? Your browser is secure. That tunnel that starts at your browser all the way to the server is gonna be entirely encrypted. So your password actually will never be seen because it's gonna be sent encrypted. Do you see that? Yeah, so then in that case, you'd probably just want it the hash function somewhere in the login.php. That's right. It, it, so when it gets to the server, the, the issue is that you don't want to store the password in clear text in the database itself, because then it's, people would just see the, first of all, they could steal the pass. See, if somebody hacked the server with a SQL injection or something, they could steal the passwords, or they could um, have disgruntled employees, steal all the passwords, et cetera. So really, that's the reason why you hash it, right? For that reason. But you rely on HTTPS to um, do the encryption, encrypted tunnel from your home to, you know, uh, let's say uh, California where the servers could be. Now, your idea of doing it in the client side, that the hashing, you definitely should do the validation on the, on the client side. So like, you know, you know, the classic example of checking for the at sign here, right? So that should just be done on the client side. Uh, but when you type in the, in the form, remember, as it leaves the browser, it leaves encrypted. So there should be no issue. There. Make sense? Yeah. All right. Any other questions? That was a great question. Uh, any other questions, guys? So where did we, so the question was, where did we use the hashing? That's what I can't remember. We have to go back to, 
where we use them, right? We used it, we have, actually, we need it in two places, right? When we register, we need to hash the password. And also when we log in, we need to, the hash of it. So, then, and then we just, we're gonna use it. So in the login, let's go, um, Go to includes. And then login ink, I think. Okay. So here now, if you notice, right, we were doing this. So now let's give it a name. Uh, let's call it get password hash. Right, there we go. And so that should take care of everything. That'll uh, make it, you know, now we know this, but logging ink does not have any includes. So then uh, who calls logging ink? That's what we need to figure out. Was it index? Pseudo. Yeah, it's indexed. Index, right? Right, so this one called this. So then, and this one calls either config inc or MySQL. So I think we can put it in either one of these. In either one of these. Um, now I'll say this, because the password has to do with the database, right? If you think about it, the password has to do with the database. Whenever we talk about password, right? We're gonna do a SQL statement, right? Basically. So that would tell me that we should probably put it in the database one. You guys agree? So MySQL Inc. PHP here because the password is always gonna come here. And so therefore, whenever we make a data, you know, there could be a scenario where we just call ink and we don't need uh, the hash, right? We only need the hash whenever we need a password. So I, I would say just do it here. So then, uh, So I believe the function, so the function, let's put it here then, uh, function. Get password hash. Okay. All right, so this one takes an input, the password obviously. That's what we did, I think. And then just, you know, return. And I believe PHP has a built-in function called hash HMAC but I'm sure it, there's more things that you can test. Try them out and it works something like this. So you'll specify what uh, hashing algorithm. So what do you guys think? Which one? SHA-256. Very good, SHA-256. Good, all right. And then uh, the, obviously the password needs to be in here. And then uh, usually uh, the salt, right? So, so 
to add a little bit more randomization. So just put in some kind of a sequence of random sequence. Parameters. Okay. And I believe uh, it has a true here that I don't remember what this one is. And that should be it, right? So then now you can, whenever you want to hash the password, you use this function. And that's it. Believe it or not, this should be everything that you need to get your project up and running, okay? You just have to test it out a little bit with your database connections. But at this point, you know, we can summarize. So in conclusion, you know, we've created a nice little website. Obviously, improve the appearance of it, please. Uh, but you have, you know, you come here to the index page or the home page. We did this all in MVC. There's your login. So you log in, it authenticates you, and then the session tracks you all across all these pages that you're going to have. If you want to register, you go here, right, and you add your register information. You click on add. Now your account exists. And then, as I said, once you've, authentic once you've authenticated, also make sure you don't show the form anymore. Instead, just show the logout link. And then that, that's it. That concludes our NBC project. So at this point, I don't have any, any other material, right? So this is, um, you know, this is all I'm going to provide for your term project. So uh, from here on, I expect you guys to just take it from here, test out all the database connections that everything works. I would recommend you do that uh, as a priority, get all the functionality going, change the appearance, make it nice. And then of course, I'm sure the theme, you know, if you're selling books, if you're selling, uh, you know, whatever, whatever products or, or, or things you need to change it to that appearance, your database needs to be incremented and so on. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording at this time.